Jorn is on the line. Hey, Jorn, what's up? Hey, Dave. Honored to speak with you. Thanks for taking the time to take my call. My honor, too, sir. How can I help? Uh, my wife and I run a roofing and gutter business uh, two years into it. Uh, we have about 10 team members and uh, a team of subcontractors. Year one last year, we did $1.6 million in revenue. Uh, this year, we will finish right around $4.2. Dad, go, uh, man. A bit of a <laughs> what bit in of a the jump. world? You must have been in the business for a long time before you opened this. Uh, no, I'm 27. I uh, moved from Canada a couple of years ago uh, to come to North Idaho where my wife grew What's up. the deal? Nobody there had um, a roof? How in the world? Uh, uh, this, I'm no so impressed. You, this is all, amazing. All the, uh, all the you came out of the shoot like Dave, a dadgum so. <laughs> Kentucky Derby thoroughbred. Yeah. We uh, well, we just we did the things that a modern business does. We answered our phone, did some <laughs> of the, the online stuff. We had a Google listing and... Yeah, again, no offense to to the older crowd, but a lot of the roofers here are, are on the way out the door. Um, they're shutting their businesses down, and it wasn't why we moved here, but it was a great opportunity for for business to flourish. And, wow! Uh, we just kind of took so the a few, opportunity. A few basic modern them. marketing techniques and business processes, and you go from one point six year one, four point two year two, and ten team members on guttering and roofing. Dude, you're a stud. I'm yep. impressed. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did about twenty thousand dollars worth of marketing last year, so just a few oh, pennies. Um, it was very little, and we're we're starting to do that now. But yeah, so I'll get to my question. My question is really kind of the next step. We're we're on that rocket trajectory, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. We're expanding into kind of another market very close by to us. Most people would call it their regular service area, but about an hour south of us, and trying to get some wisdom maybe from you on both both personal and from the business side of things of like how much growth is too much growth what's sustainable um what should we be thinking about to i mean i got horse blinders on sometimes and i want to just make sure that we yeah. we do a good job of honoring our team honoring the lord and his blessings and also Amen. i got two little kids at home and a wife and do good there as well good for you well the Things that I've run into with the businesses we've coached and the dumbest things we've done around here all come around this one metaphor. The military, when they are running a, a land battle uh, and a ground war, uh, have discovered that they have to keep things three things going. The guys on the and gals fighting on the front line, they have to keep a steady stream of gas gasoline, food, and ammunition coming. If the supply lines of those three things, if the battle line moves faster than the supply lines, the people get killed because mm -hmm. they run out of gasoline, bullets, and food, or any one of those three will get them killed, right? Yeah. So the battle can only advance as fast as the resources is the metaphor. Around our business, the resources we look at that are, if we get out past, if we get out over our skis, if we get out past our abilities on these three things, we immediately, or sadly, not even immediately, it may be a 12-month delay, start feeling the pain. If we get out past our cash, our money, we run out to the edge of the money, we're running right on bleeding edge of the money. If we get out past our technological abilities, our website, our programming, our digital capabilities, our, uh, in your case, you're going to be doing some, um, like you said, some, you're, you're probably doing some, uh, some SEO work. You're probably doing some paid ads on Google, Facebook, and so on, that kind of thing. You've got the ability to reach people there, but nobody else in your space is probably doing that. Sounds like you're tinkering in the edges of it, but you can spend out past that. You can go past your technology. If, you're, if your inner, internal systems cannot handle the, the growth, you've moved out past those. A ridiculous example would be if you had one laptop you're running the whole thing on, and all of a sudden, it was a big operation, and then you needed 25 computers, right? And you needed a network with those computers all talking to each other. That's a ridiculously simple, primitive example, but that's an example of you outran your technology in a small business, okay? If you out, get out past your money, you get out past your technology, and here's the big one. This one has bit my butt. 
I got I got teeth marks on my butt from half my life for this. People, the human yeah. resource. If I get out past quality people on my team, I don't have the people, the quality people to execute the work, lead the work, cause the customer to be happy. Instead, I've hired some doofuses that will fog up a mirror because I got in a hurry. Oh, God, so much pain. Totally. You let the yep. cr- let, I got too fast. I let crazy in the building. And dad gum, man, you can't get nothing done with crazy in your building. You know what I'm talking yep. about? Oh, absolutely. It, we've, we've had them it, this year. It's too. real <laughs> easy to do. We got all this work to do, and all we're doing is roofing. So, by God, you strap on a hammer, let's go. Who knew the guy was an absolute psycho, you know, with yeah. a hammer now? Oh, my gosh, you know, and it's just like, oh, God. And, um, but they're there. They're there everywhere. There's more of them than there are us, actually. So, um, you know, people that will actually work while they're at work, that's an amazing idea. Here, here, people that actually care and treat each other with some reasonable level of relational interface. I'm just talking about not pissing everybody off every day. I mean, the basics, you know? So if you, if you go too fast in your hiring, you're going to get the opportunity to do all your hiring over again because you screwed it up, and you're going to mess up some of your customer base. They're not going to like right. you anymore because you don't serve them well because you send some doofus over to their house. You didn't mean to, but you got you're, you expanded faster than your quality human resources. Quality yeah. humans on your team are probably going to be the thing that slows you down, not opportunity yeah, we, in the marketplace. We work with a consultant, and they did a bunch of coaching for me on how to hire. And the last three people we've hired have been absolute just rock stars. Just learning, learning how to interview, how to how to make job posting properly has helped us a bunch. Makes a big difference on on the on the cash side of things. I, I we we run a very you should be flushing cash with your we, revenue. Yeah, we we run around a twenty eight percent net profit margin right now. Is yeah, where we're floating. Yeah, you ought to be sitting on some money. Yeah, you. I don't think cash yeah. is going to be your problem. Cash hasn't been no. our problem for twenty years. Yeah. We got plenty of cash because we've made money. Mm-hmm. That's not been the question. Yep. Our problem has yeah. been that they you, we have an unbelievable hiring process and an unbelievable recruiting process, and still, I mean, I we yeah. went through. I guess the last batch was probably, uh, well, it showed up in, in in the pandemic is when the crazy showed up. <laughs> so it brought crazy yeah. out in a lot of people. But um, that that's when I, you know, I looked up and we'd hire, I could tell, we'd hire people that all they cared about was a J-O-B. They didn't care about this place. They didn't care about our customers. They didn't care about their tribe. And, you know, and so I then, then they got to care about working somewhere else because we fired them, you know, and it just... Yeah. God, it was awful, and it was just bad hiring. And we're we're known for good hiring. We're really good at it. But we were just blowing and going. We were growing, and we just let up just a little bit, just a little bit, and boom, man! I had, you know, uh, a group of folk in here I wish I'd never met, and um, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't a bunch of them, just enough of them to wish to to to, to cause me consternation but there you go look that one up but anyway yeah yeah just anyway be careful on that but as long as you can put good quality people in that fit your culture and these aren't just people that are good at roofing they can do relationships with the other people they tell the truth they're kind They're, they're they don't piss everybody off they come in contact with you know they are actual, you know, they have actual relational skills with each other. And so, because you can find people, this is what most people make the mistake of in corporate America. You're not going to make the mistake. I don't make it very often. But you can find people that are actually very skilled at their job, but they just don't know how to exist with other, other human beings. And, and so it makes them useless as a team member. Their emotional, their EQ is so low while their IQ is very high. And so they're excellent, you know, computer programmers, web designers, they're excellent salespeople, they're excellent whatever. But when it comes to working with other human beings in the building, they're an absolute freaking nightmare. And and so they're the and so you make the mistake of hiring somebody's quality quality at their talent. I mean, you watch it on a football team. 
You know, you got a guy over who's the best at catching a football in the world, but he, he pisses everybody off. Nobody wants to throw him the football, you know? And if they do, they kind of hate it when they have to. You know, it's the same thing inside a business. You know, you just gotta, you gotta work past that. So that that's my that's my my pitch, and I'm sticking to it. It sounds very simple and very primitive, but it's the biggest violation that small businesses have. 